What's going on guys, Victor here, back with another Tackle Tuesday, and first, I want to apologize for being inconsistent with the Tackle Tuesdays, and secondly, a huge thank you for all of you who got me to that 10k. If you're a new subscriber, welcome, but let's make 2017 great, make YouTube great again, and keep pushing that envelope till it breaks. So in this week's Tackle Tuesday, I'm going to go over some guidelines to help you guys choose a shark hook for the right application. First, let me start out by saying that I'm a huge proponent of circle hooks when it comes to shark fishing. Now there's two reasons I like circle hooks for catch and release shark fishing. Number one being that generally you will hook the shark in the corner of the mouth every single time. Out of all the sharks I've ever caught on circle hooks, only one has been gut hooked. And what the corner of the mouth hook set will allow you to do is, first of all, it's going to increase the survival rate of the shark by decreasing the uh, chance of it being gut hooked. And secondly, it's going to allow for an easy hook removal because that hook is easily exposed in the corner of the mouth as opposed to deep in the gut. Secondly, I noticed that when you hook a shark in the corner of the mouth with a circle hook, you tend to not pull hooks or lose fish. This in turn will lead to confidence when you're fighting your fish because you're not afraid of backing off the drag or anything else because you know that that hook is locked in there in the corner of the mouth, which is a very secure spot for it to be. With that being said, this video will focus on circle hooks when it comes to shark fishing. So firstly, I'm going to give you two things to consider when it comes to choosing the size of your circle hook. And then at the end of the video, I will showcase the hooks that I personally use and that have helped me land some giants over the years. Now there are two factors to consider when it comes to actually determining the size of your circle hook. Number one being the size of the target species you're after. Additionally, there's no one size hook fits them all. I have caught some very large sharks on small hooks and very small sharks on large hooks. So I'm going to give you a size range to choose from based on years of experience of both on the sand and on the boat. When it comes to targeting these large sharks, you know anything in that 8 foot plus range, big bulls, big tigers, big hammers, I recommend going no smaller than a 16-0 hook and no bigger than a 20-0 sized hook. Keep in mind that the size of the hook isn't everything, you also have to consider the thickness of the wire gauge of the actual hook. Now there's a reason the thickness of the wire gauge is important and here's why. So take for example, everyone's been to the doctor and everyone's gotten a shot before. If you get pricked, or if the doctor gives you a shot with a really thin wire gauge needle, you're generally not going to feel it as much as those really big, thick needles. Like when you got booster shots, you got to think, it is a lot harder and you have to apply a lot more pressure to pierce the skin of a shark or to pierce the skin of a person with a thicker wire gauge material. So that holds true for shark fishing as well. Now, although the thinner wire needle will pierce a shark's mouth easier, you also have to consider the fact that the thinner the wire, the easier it is gonna to be to bend if you consider that the two wires are gonna be made of the same material. So that holds true for hooks as well. If you have two hooks made of the same material, one of them has a thicker wire gauge, one of them has a thinner wire gauge, the thicker wire gauge will be less prone to bend out or straighten than the thinner wire will. And if you're targeting large sharks, you do not want a thin wire gauge hook because it will be more prone to straighten or bend out. And if your hook straightens or bends out, there's a really high chance of that shark throwing the hook and you're going to lose your fish. But now, generally speaking, if you have a wider gap clearance between your hook point and the shank of your hook, you're generally going to have a higher hookup ratio. And this is because you're just going to have more room to work with and for that hook point to get caught in the corner of that shark's mouth. With that being said, that wider gap and higher hookup ratio does come with a price. Because if you think about it logically, if these hooks are both the same wire gauge and they're, the design is pretty similar, this gap right here is already almost twice as large as this LP. So in order for this hook to straighten, it has to travel a lot less of a distance than this hook would. Now that I've discussed the size range you should be fishing for those larger sharks in the 8 foot plus range, I'm going to go over the size range you should be fishing for 6 foot sharks and under. So this size range should work perfectly for casted baits, you know you're targeting black tips, spinner sharks, or you're surf casting, this is perfect. You're going to want to fish a hook in the 6-0 to 10 size range as the size of your targeted species drops, such as those 6 foot sharks are smaller, your hook size should drop as well. Number one being you're generally going to be fishing smaller baits and it just does not make sense to have a large hook for a smaller bait and I'll actually explain that later. And secondly, those smaller sharks are just not going to generate as much force to straighten out a hook and there is just not the demand for those larger hooks. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys why matching the size of your hook to the size of your bait is really important as well. First I'm going to start with the big bait and show you the difference between hooking it with a small hook and then a large hook. You want to hook your bait just enough so that way it's going to stay in there with tension and when the shark grabs it, but light enough 
and superficially enough so that way it rips out. Because you're not going to hook anything unless it rips out because the hook has to actually make contact with the fish's corner of the mouth and make contact with the jaw in order for you to get a good hook set. Now just imagine a shark picks it up so I'm going to put some tension on this. Do you see how the hook stays there in place even when I put tension on it and the weight of the hook or the bait, the weight of the hook is supporting the weight of the bait. This is not going to hold true the same for the smaller hook. So you got to find a nice balance of how much hook point and shank of the hook is exposed and out of the bait to the amount that's actually in it. The more hook you have in the bait, the less hookup rate you're going to have because you have less of the actual uh, portion of the hook that's going to be doing the work in order to hook the shark. So now I'm going to show you what it's going to look like if you had a really thin wire or smaller hook with a really large bait. Remember what I told you, you're going to have to hook it shallow enough for it to rip out, but deep enough for it not to pull out with any tension. And you want as much of the hook point exposed as possible. Now I'm going to show you and see what happens when you put any tension on the thinner wire, that smaller hook, and you're fishing that big bait. And always picture, so that shark's going to pick it up, put it in his mouth, and he's going to shake his head once, and you're going to see what happens to that thin wire gauge hook. It's just like the doctor at the needle's office. That thinner wire is a lot easier to penetrate through your skin and a lot easier to pull out. So watch what happens. It rips right out because it's not able to support the weight of the bait and that thinner wire just cuts right through the bait. So that's the same thing that's going to be happening to you when you're fishing for sharks. So you want a big enough hook to support the weight of the bait. You got to think of the ratio of the wire gauge of the hook to the weight of the bait. The thinner the wire gauge of the hook, the deeper you're going to have to hook it in order for it not to rip out when you're fishing a bigger bait and a heavier bait. If I was fishing something smaller and I lifted it up, that thinner wire gauged hook isn't going to be dragged down and pulled through a smaller weight bait as much. So now I'm going to show you what it's like to have that small bait with that small hook. See this is fishing effectively and you don't look like a Guggen now because the size of your hook is matching the size of your bait and you wouldn't believe how many people either use too big of a hook or too small of a hook and they don't understand the physics or the principle behind it. So this thinner wire gauge hook is going to rip out of that bait really easily, but not too easily to the point where you're just going to keep missing fish. Because now think of the ratio of this thin wire hook to the weight of this bait. There's not a lot of force pulling down on it. You're not ripping a giant hole in the bait itself because it's a thin wire gauge hook. So it's going to be thin enough to pull out easily and get a good hookup but it's also not putting that big of a hole in the bait itself where it's going to rip out on its own, which is not going to be the same case for that bigger hook, which I'm going to about to show you. And also another thing to consider, you don't have to hook this as deep in order for it to stay buried in there because you're not ripping that big of a hole because of that thin wire gauge. But you're going to see the exact opposite when I show you that 20 Mustad in there now. Look at how much of your effective range of your hook point is out of the bait. This is what's doing the action. This is what's going to hook your shark. If you, and with a lighter, smaller bait, you don't have to hook it as deep without it ripping out. If I wanted to keep this small hook in that big chunk of bonita or that whole bonita, I could have, but I would have to bury it super deep, and then your circle hook's not working effectively because you don't have the actual area of the hook that needs to be exposed, exposed. But with a smaller bait, you have it exposed. So now look at how stupid this looks. This is a pure Guggen move. You do not want to have something that looks like this. But you wouldn't believe how many people fish like this. Sure, a shark, a shark might pick it up, but the chance of it is very low because you got to think. The proportion of your terminal tackle or your hook to your bait is basically identical. What would make a shark want to eat this? And although this could work in theory, you do not want to do this because think about how much more tension you have to put on this thick wire gauge hook in order for it to rip out of this skin than you do this thin wire gauge hook. Just like the doctor's office, remember, that thinner wire gauge hook is going to pierce the skin a lot easier and come out a lot easier. So this is more effective because in order for a circle hook to work, it needs to rip out of the bait and it needs to get caught in the corner of the mouth. As promised, now I'm going to go over the hooks that I personally fish and have used over the years. The first hook I'm going to highlight is the 20 Mustang. This is the hook you have seen on the channel the most. This is the hook that I have used the most over the years and this is the hook that has been used in almost every single shark video that you guys have seen on this channel. Now I have never straightened these hooks and this is the hook that I actually used to catch that giant hammerhead a few years ago. These hooks are actually relatively cheap, they're $2 at most tackle shops. These hooks are easy to sharpen, you can catch multiple sharks on them, they do not rust that much. Aside from a little bit of rust, you will get on the hook point, but that can be filed down. Second hook I want to highlight is the 18-0 LP circle hook. I did used to use this hook in the past, I never had a bad experience with them, I guess I just stopped using them over the years. 
but this is gonna be my go-to hook for this season. I'm gonna tell you why right now. So although I've never straightened out the 20 on Mustad and never had a bad experience, I have seen it straightened out in front of me and I have heard of a lot of people actually straightening these hooks out. So I don't know if I've gotten lucky or they just had a bad batch of hooks, but that is one reason I do wanna to switch to this 18 OLP. Secondly, you gotta think, this is a commercial grade swordfish long line hook that commercial fishermen use. And commercial fishermen care way more about landing their catch than the recreational fishermen. You gotta think, if they have a 500 pound bluefin on the line and their hook breaks, they're gonna be pissed because that is a thousands and thousands of dollar paycheck. So there's a reason they use this and this is the industry standard when it comes to big game fishing. As mentioned earlier with the width of the gap of the hook between the hook point and the shank. I have seen this hook straighten out. I have never ever heard of the 18 OLP straightening or breaking. So if it means a few less hookups, I'm willing to take the hit because when it comes to that one fish that matters, you do not want your hook straightening and getting your feelings hurt. Now my go-to smaller shark hook for surf casting and such is gonna be this Mustad Demon Perfect Circle Hook. It is 3x strong, I've never had it straighten, and in fact, me and Ryan, who you guys have seen on the channel before, Ryan caught a 350 pound bull shark on a boat with a braid with maximum tension on this very little hook you see right here. All the hooks I just mentioned are gonna be in the description box below. All right, welcome to the end of the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. You know, maybe got a new perspective on this whole shark hook thing. And additionally, I got some big news. I am now a Bullbuster Ambassador, so what that means for you guys is, if you use my co coupon code LANDSHARK, so it's gonna be in the description box below with directions as well. Bullbuster is a, a monofilament company line based out of Miami, and they also make fluorocarbon and braid, and I do believe in their products and I am going to be affiliated with them now. So if you guys want to save money and skip the middleman and save money online and fluorocarbon and braid on all this stuff, use my coupon code LANDSHARK to save 10% off your next order. That's gonna be the description box below. And until next time, guys, I'll be seeing all you guys, my Landsharks, in that next video.